Orvieto is known as a city of music and of ancient and great tradition for many reasons. A flourishing cultural center even in medieval times when it was chosen by different popes as a place to stay outside Rome. And the papal court, with all its religious, literary figures, poets and musical supporters, encouraged the development of refined intellectual vitality. The Lauda Sion Salvatorum sequence, prescribed for the Roman Catholic Mass of Corpus Christi, was written during this time by St. Thomas Aquinas, a theology teacher in Orvieto. He composed it in 1264 at the request of Pope Urban IV, who then declared the solemn Catholic feast of Corpus Domini in the same year, right from the rock of Orvieto. In the medieval era, the city was an excellent centre for sacred plays, and these are considered to be the first Italian musical theatre using great scenery equipment. Orvieto is also linked to one of the major music theorists of Ars Nova, Ugolino di Urbivetteri, originally from Orvieto. His impressive work of Declaratio Musicae Disciplinae represents the highest knowledge on the subject in the 1400s. Music revolved around that Maius de Totomondo for several centuries, as the grand organ of the cathedral was to find a true monument within a monument. Highly esteemed composers were called to direct the musical cappella, who have left us with a wealth of sacred music of priceless value. We have to wait until the 1800s for another prestigious music building to be opened, and the cathedral to no longer be the only cultural temple here. The new theatre was created according to the fashion of the time, in neoclassical style. The aristocracy and middle classes wanted it, during this time of renaissance, aiming to relive the splendour of the past. The 1800s was a golden era for musical Orvieto. The name of the city appeared time after time in the newspapers for more than a century, together with the four protagonists of Italian and international theatre, the two Frezzolini, father Giuseppe and daughter Minia, and the two Mancinelli brothers, Marino and Luigi, after whom the theatre was named. Giuseppe Frezzolini was an Italian operatic bass singer and born in Orvieto. He is best known for the role of Dulca Mara in Donizetti's Elisir d'Amore, one of the best performers of this comic opera. He was father of the soprano Arminia Frezzolini, who was considered the last queen of Italian bel canto. Arminia was grandeur, one of the leading operatic singers of her generation, in the most important European theatres. The public called her the great diva, and she was highly regarded by well-known music critics and Giuseppe Verde, along with other important composers. But she died in poverty after quickly spending the large sums of money she had earned. Marino Mancinelli's life was also full of grandeur and decadence. He directed orchestras and promoted Wagner's music. He even had the honour of the German maestro's presence during the performance of one of his operas, Marienzi, at the Theatre in Bologna. However, Marino Mancinelli tragically committed suicide after his theatre production he had founded in Brazil failed. Luigi Mancinelli was a leading Italian orchestra conductor, the Garibaldi of orchestra conductors, as Wagner once said. He was an incredibly cultured man. After directing theatres in Rome and Bologna in his first few years, he worked with the biggest operatic stars in the most important international theatres, from London to New York, from Madrid to Buenos Aires. His symphonic and operatic repertoire was vast, with past and contemporary works. And he was especially associated with the music of Verdi, Wagner and Puccini. He was also eclectic in his compositions, writing a number of operas, composing orchestra music and even some film music. The main theatre in his birthplace of Orvieto is named the Teatro Mancinelli in his honour. With such a cultural inheritance, Orvieto today continues to strive in the music world, with its music school, Philharmonic Community Orchestra, named after Luigi Mancinelli, and with many great events for those who love classical music, folk and jazz. The Orvieto Music and Cultural Festival at Easter, the Umbria Folk Festival in the month of August, and of course, Umbria Jazz Winter, that kicks off the new year in an exhilarating atmosphere.